Let's take a look at uh, that shilling firstly because it continues to dominate. Headlines are jumping to a record low of 91.25 yesterday against the dollar. Now the CBK coming out saying they're not going to be intervening at this, age, at this stage because uh, they're expected to make things worse. Would you agree that it's uh, wise to be staying out given the concerns that we have around the co rising cost of goods in the country? No, I don't think so. I think the, the, the Central Bank of Kenya is working under the auspices of the IMF. Um, they they uh, agreed a loan of about $500 million a few months back. And I think part of the uh, language around that loan was that they had to increase their import cover to four months worth of hard currency. And essentially the Central Bank uh, is, has been the biggest seller of Kenya shillings since 2009. And uh, for now, uh, the market is just following uh, their, 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 their instructions, essentially. So I think we look extremely weak. We've imported all this inflation. We're going to get a second burst of inflation. And if we're in this strategy of a benign ne neglect of the currency, I think there's a danger we're going to run up to 100. But there's plenty of momentum behind this trade now, and it continues to plumb new lows. The central bank also coming out saying uh, speculative uh, trading could also be partly to blame and could be exacerbating the problems. They're also going to be looking at the bank's uh, commercial dealing books to uh, try and catch irregular trades. Do you think this is a concern, the speculative trading side of things? No, that tends to be the excuse from central banks all over the world when they don't like what the currency is doing and it's the same here. Speculation I don't think has been uh, a huge component of this downdraft. Um, it has been some part of it because clearly the central bank has given us all the green light to sell the shilling. They've hardly given us any reasons to buy it. So to some degree, but really, you know, to, to spank the speculators at this point is a meaningless exercise, I think. Let's take a look at uh, some of the stocks uh, moving yesterday. We had uh, Williamson T, uh, the top gainer, up 3.8% trading at uh, 218 shillings today. Uh, results coming out for that company, full year results. Now, uh, profits, uh, profits were marginally up to 884.4 million shillings. Revenue grew 21%, but operating a margin declined to 25.1%. Is this a concern going forward, managing uh, those expenses? Well, you know, Williams and T always have the same rhetoric. If you go back for the last 10 years, they say the same thing. I think they change one word or two only. But uh, tea companies are in the sweetest of sweet spots. Uh, Williams and T, this is, although it was a marginal gain, the, the EPS is, is of a quantum not seen in, I think, 30 or 40 years, 97 shillings a share or, or thereabouts. It's trading on a price earnings ratio of two. Um, it's got a net asset value, which is at least five to ten times the current share price. And I think uh, Williamson should have, one, paid a much bigger dividend. That would have helped. But, you know, the majority shareholder in this company is keener on a long-term and cheap supply of tea rather than extracting a proper value from the share price. And I think it's going to become pretty impossible to hold this share price back at some point. I remain very bullish on tea. It's, there's been a sweetener for these companies as well with a weak shilling, so the translation gain is, has made it even better. And really, they are ultimately in a purple patch. The tea price moving average is significantly, the price currently is significantly higher than the historical moving average. These are good times for tea, for tea producers. And of course, the weaker shilling is a positive uh, for exports there. Yes. And exports are expected to continue to rise um, in the coming months. Now, let's just take a look at the banking sector. Uh, the bank, mm. uh, the, the Kenyan president coming out saying that the average lending rate, which is sitting at around 13.9% as at March 2011, um, was a stark contrast to the uh, deposit rate sitting at 3.5%. So you've got that interest spread are the 10.4 percent he's urging banks to decrease that interest spread in order to uh, capitalize on uh, getting more people into the uh, formal banking sector do you think this is a good move but what type of impact then could this have on uh, bank profitability going forward if they do well I, I think it, the central bank uh, and the president have been trying to chivy the banks to lower their lending rates to to the average Joe for quite some time without much success um, the banks have been quite stubborn in not really moving, uh, moving that rate, the consumer lending rate, much. I think we had like a 600 basis point rally in, in the government of Kenya curve and the banks moved about half a percent. 
So he's right to be talking about this, but I think the problem now is that we've had all this volatility, this huge parallel move higher in the government of Kenya yield curve, and I think it'll make it very difficult for banks right now uh, to lower lending rates. Uh, Bank of Africa last week uh, proposed to increase lending rates. So I think, unfortunately, in this particular instance, the president is swimming against the tide. And as you say, um, those rising yields on government securities have seen banks prefer to hold government securities on their books as opposed to um, increasing private sector spending. What is your take on the fact that they are leaning towards uh, government bonds at this stage? Well, I mean, it's quite interesting. If I can take you back a little bit, the banks made an enormous amount of money trading, uh, trading government bonds throughout 2010. It was a one-way bet. The curve rallied sharply and they rode some very nice and juicy gains. However, they came into 2011 long. Uh, the shilling weakness to which you alluded to, um, plus the runaway inflation rate, absolutely uh, crushed bond prices here in Kenya. So some banks have, have unfortunately, are probably looking at some pretty vicious mark-to-market -market losses because of uh, those positions being carried from last year. But having said that, near term, we've had short-term rates uh, and treasury bill rates come up just shy of 10%. And at banks, as you've noted, have been once again in the, in the recent few weeks parking their money in, in these assets, which are paying extremely good interest rates. Ali Khan, we are running out of time. Just one last question for you. Um, yes. Looking at uh, mar broader market sentiment at this stage, we see that foreigners um, have been net sellers in the market for the past two yep. months. If you look at uh, sales in the last month, they equated to 6.24 billion shillings. Now, that was close Correct. to around the financial crisis, the onset of the financial crisis in June 2008. Is this a worrying trend that we're seeing on the international front? Well, I, I think what I noticed, I did some work on a report from the World Bank, the economic update, and I saw a number of in excess of $1 billion worth of short-term money in the system. And I think recent weakness in the shilling, this number you've just thrown at me as well, all confirm that we've seen some of this fast money hit the exit button. And that's a worrying sign, as you correctly ask, yes.